Hey, what's up everybody? So today we're gonna have like one of those in the driveway shop videos. Got some parts to put, um, actually I got a couple of jobs to do. It's a balmy Saturday afternoon. Beautiful skies right here behind me. This is a Lexus GX. I got a project for the back of this. I got the Jeep over here, which we took out last weekend. It was awesome fun. We got the 80, the Land Cruiser 80 right here, which we're going to be working on. And we got the Land Cruiser 100 right here. So I've got three Land Cruisers and a Jeep. <laughs> All right, I'm going to show you the stuff I have on the table. When I turn the camera away from me, the audio gets whack because... So, bear with me. Right here is a spare battery box. And I'll show you what this is all about. Not a spare battery box, it's an actual battery box. But this is for the early 80 series. In the early 80 series, they had the battery on the passenger side. On, it was a different engine. On the later 80 series, like this one is a 97, the battery's on the driver's side, different engine. But you can get the old battery tray and put it in here and have the, the ability to put in two batteries if you want without having to do a bunch of modifications. So I've got the early battery tray and it's hardware. I got a couple of those fusible links I was telling you about to get spares, so I have two of those. This is a washer bottle relocation kit because the washer bottle is sitting right here in the way of this. So we relocate that. And then this thing, this little plate here, is for future electronics of a dual battery system. And this mounts in conjunction with this. We'll see what that looks like. It's, it's called the 80 series dual battery electronics mount. So we'll see what that looks like. Then, this is the, um, the hardware for the washer bottle relocation kit. Obviously, you have to extend some lines for the uh, pump that pushes the water out. And then here, this is pretty cool. I've been, been kind of excited. This is uh, the shifter section, right? So you have the console that sits behind it. and Whatever, I guess this is kind of a console. But this is the shifter. Here's the four-wheel drive. You got your switch for your um, second gear start and your power start. And then this piece is gonna sit up here. And I've already started dabbling with what I want in here. This is a temp meter, which I can actually get temperature because this car is so old it doesn't have temp. Inside here and here are USBs. So those uh, got two USBs and a USB-C and two USBs. Not 100% uh, sure what, you know, what ultimately I'm going to do with the layout of this. And this other section over here that's, that's uh, got a cutout, for future you can put one of those Switch Pros in. It's a um, solid state relay where the, the relays go under here and it runs in basically like a ethernet type cable, a bus cable into that switch. And then you can, you can have uh, like six or eight switches and switch the solid state relays under the hood. You know, lights, auxiliary lights, fog lights, stuff like that. That's probably what you'd mostly use that for. Um, I guess you could switch on, I guess you could switch on a air compressor I don't know if you'd want to put your lockers through there, but you might be able to put like your locker solenoids through there because those all come off a basic switch anyway. So I'm already starting to drip sweat. This is going to be fun, but that's a, f a little bit of the stuff I have for the 80 series here. Not sure what I'm going to get done, but I'm going to work on that today. And over here, I don't know if you can see, there's some plywood I got from Home Depot. Got a couple couple half sheets, four, four by four. And in the back here of the GX, that tire that I showed you over here, I've been carrying it sitting right here. So what I want to do is I'm going to make a wood floor, put the tire in, and then basically make a platform that sits over the top of the tire, 
recreating the floor just a little bit higher and I can store the tire in here. And I might, this white table here is the table that I have for in here, it folds in half. And I had it sitting up here and I might cut a slot for it to sit in there and hold. Kind of see what I can do with it. Basically it's to allow me to carry my spare. The spare won't fit underneath, it's too big. Uh, the 33, I mean, the full size 33 that I got for this is a lot bigger than the stock tire. So it won't fit underneath in the stock location. And I don't have an aftermarket bumper for this, for a tire carrier. So it's got to sit inside. I was contemplating putting it vertical, but it actually, it's, it's pretty big. It's, it's actually a lot safer and easier if I lay it flat. And so that will probably be coming up in another video, but that should be interesting. So let me get set up, get the hood open. We'll take a look at this other stuff. Here in the 97 is where the battery sits. You can see same style battery box. Over here was the like 91, 92. So I'm gonna take this. Yeah, you can see it, it's in frame. I'm gonna take this washer fluid bottle and relocate it to right here, back here in this empty area. And then that battery box should sit right here and that electronics thing goes somewhere right in there. It shouldn't be that big of a deal, so. And if you look up here, you can see the cutout where the, the this is the battery box. You can see it's still existing in this hood from the early years. It's kind of cool to be able to, to put them both in. I don't know if I'll run a dual battery setup or not, but I want to get this set up because it's a lot of wasted space on that side. So I guess step one is to remove the fluid from the reservoir. What I have here is my camping pee bottle. Never been used yet, but this is supposed to sit in your tent and you can pee in here so you don't have to leave the tent. <laughs> and then in the morning you can go dump it out. So I'm gonna use this thing. And I've got this from the auto parts store a while back. It's supposed to be a, a sucker. It looks like, I don't remember trying to use it for anything, but it's like a, I don't know, it just feels like it's going to leak all over the place, so maybe I'll try and go out and in. Oh wow, that is hot. The fluid is hot. It's like a turkey baster. I can't believe how hot the fluid is. The cylinder on this thing just heated up in my hand. Oh, it's actually really hot. Looks like mouthwash. Man, everything in this engine bay just gets so dang hot. That's most of it. Like Gatorade. So I'll put this back in when it's done. All right, so I pulled off the uh, the little rubber line. It kind of comes back along here, runs across, and then up in on the other side. I gotta take out the, uh, the electrical here. Okay, it's just got a little, it's got a pretty good sized tab on there. Pull it right out. Now, should be able to take out the bolts if I can get. To, oh, they're in a weird spot for every. Try this gun. This one's in a very precarious spot here. There we go. 
So there's the fuel bottle and it's gonna be remounted back over here somewhere. All right, so I guess the next step is to actually mount the tank to the plate. What they did was they have two sets of holes. So they have two here, two here, two here, and one here. And in the directions it says if you mount on the top holes, you don't have to do any modifications, no drilling, no nothing. But the top of the tank will come in contact with the insulation on the hood and probably over time would wear through. But if you move it to the second holes, which is only about a, about a half inch difference, you will have to drill on this one, this tab here, you'll have to drill the plastic on the tank, but it won't touch. So I'm going to opt for that one. Now, the little bag of goodies, it's pretty cool the way, this is all Delta vehicle system stuff. Delta has got a lot of cool parts for, for 80 series. I think they started making 100 series bumpers too. Really nice stuff so far. I'm, so my first piece I'm going to be using. And they've got little cells. So they said open the first cell. That's the first bolt. So then the second cell will be mounting the plate to the vehicle. And then the last cell will be doing the, the electrical. So that's pretty cool setup. The only thing that, that uh, I can see that's like, um, I don't know. Maybe it's nitpicking, but it bugs me a little bit. Is they used standard bolt sizes. So they're, it's quarter inch. These are quarter inch bolts, which is a 7 16 head. So it's not metric. And you know how everything on these Toyotas is very specifically only a few different metric sizes. So I had to go get my, my 7 16 and a little ratchet. I know it's nitpicking, but you know, what are you going to do? So here's one hole. Here's one hole. Here's one hole. And then this one here, we're going to have to drill just above this hole. But if you, you can see, it's just, it's just plastic. There's plenty, there's plenty of, uh, plenty of space there. So, all right. So each one of these, there's different, there's three different lengths. This one is obviously a long one. So the first one requires no spacers. And they said to come in from the backside with the bolt. So we're going to go into the second hole to the backside. I don't even know if this is showing up, but... And then I think they got really nice directions with pictures. So it says that this hole I'm on now, top left, three quarter inch bolt, tank, washer, nut. Okay. Tank, washer, nut. And these are ni nylon self-locking nuts. You can see the nylon insert in there. So I will just, until I get everything on, I will just snug these up, but I will snug them up. If you ever dealt with nylocks, they're only gonna go on a few threads before they hit the nylock. So even if you wanna snug them up a little bit, you're gonna have to put wrenches on them. And these, you definitely don't wanna over tighten. It says don't over tighten them, which is obvious because they're going into plastic. Okay, so the second hole, the second hole we're dealing with here is hole number two, which should be the, the top one on this side over here. They actually start off in this manual saying that they're going to refer to the holes and they show the holes. One, two, three, and four. Very good directions. You know, you always look for good directions on something like this. It really simplifies things. So hole number two is that one and hole number two takes the inch and a quarter bolt, a nylon spacer, then the tank, then the washer, then the nut. Okay, so we go bolt. Oop. And we remember they're using those the second holes. So bolt through, then the nylon spacer. I'm not trying to. I'm trying not to get any of that residual on me. Like that. There we go. Then a washer and a nylock nut. What well, by tightening these up, I will uh, be able to see exactly where I have to drill down here.
I'm not using my my power tools on this just because it is plastic. I don't want to get carried away. And it just I'm just getting them close. Not even like really snugging them up. I'm keeping some looseness there. Okay, so the last one obviously is this big boy and this says three and a half inch bolt, two and three quarter inch aluminum spacer, tank then nut. No washer because it's a very small tab compared to the other ones. So second hole, then our spacer. I'm working on a milk crate. I don't know if you guys probably can't. Let me turn this up. See that a little bit better? Not really. All right, so we got the, the bolt, the spacer, no washer, just the nut. But these are, um, they call flange nuts. They have a little bit of a built-in washer on them. Call them flange nuts. These nuts. All right, this one, I'm going to put the socket on the back side, just because this is kind of right up against the tank. Pretty cool these kind of jobs are neat because you're not you're not taking down your car you know what i mean i can close the hood and go drive this right now as long as i don't hit this button so these are always the easy ones they're a lot less a lot less stressful okay so those are the three bolts that we have if you can see right here is the the old hole kind of halfway on it and i got a drill just above it there they it must be using this as a point. Otherwise, they wouldn't tell me to, to slot it. I wouldn't have to slot it. So what I'm going to do now that I've got the other three in, I'll just, I'm going to snug these up. So I drilled up against this edge, and then up against this edge, and then I just ran the drill bit in between. I actually went up one size from quarter to five sixteenths. And on this side, you can see it's it's just above the other hole. We're looking right, right here. Perfect. Okay, so like I said, I think later in the directions. That's going to be, because this is flat right here, that's probably going to be a mounting point up against the firewall. But we're all mounted. It's all nice and rigid. All that's, I think that's the only, I think that's the only modification you need to do. And you don't really need to do it if you wanted to choose a half an inch higher. This just sits up a little bit more, but definitely not. I, I'll opt to uh, clear that hood every time. I'll tell you that. All right, I know this is a funky angle, but so we got a diagnostic port here with a clip on the back. We're going to take that off, set that aside. We're going to take off the clip that it was on. Twelve millimeter. So it's just a angled clip. Set that aside. We got to take off this bolt here. 12 millimeter. We got to take off two of the hinge bolts here. we're going to reuse these bolts. Now in the second set pack of hardware, 
We've got this long bolt here with a spacer and a washer. We're going to put that in where that diagnostic port was and the thing's going to slide down on here so you don't want to tighten it all the way up. So the thread is metric but the head is half inch on this one. We got some cloud cover temporarily so you can actually see from this angle. So what we're trying to do is get this slot over where the diagnostic port was. The only thing that was kind of holding us up is the engine harness, the main engine harness. But it's got, you know, you've got a little bit of room there. It's on it and it's in between the spacer and the washer so that's good this is the uh, this is the part where because you're dealing with the engine harness you want to really follow the directions so you're not you're not tweaking anything so the goal here is to set the bracket onto that bolt that's what we just did so we take another 40 millimeter m8 bolt uh, with a large washer on it stick it through hole number four which is the one that we drilled I believe hole number four is the one that we drilled out and it is based off the numbering configuration then add the spacer on the other side okay so we've got an m8 40 millimeter bolt that's not a spacer that's a socket there's another aluminum spacer the spacer on the back side of the bolt hard part's going to be finding that hole That one is in, but not tight yet. Again, I'm gonna refer back to here. Okay, once you do that, continue to hold this hardware carefully, set it in place. Once it's in place, thread it loose just to hold the bracket. That's what I just did. Replace the two hinge bolts, tighten them down, then tighten the rightmost M8 bolt. Okay, then finally the bottom bolt. The bottom bolt's tricky. Good luck. <laughs> it doesn't say good luck. I flexed a little bit with some channel locks because my hand was in the way. top one done. I'll have to nip away at the bottom one with an open end wrench. Alright so I was able to finish this hinge one here. I got a uh, quarter inch ratchet with a 10 millimeter on it. Was able to get down in here really good and get on that thing. So that that ended up being good. So the next bolt we're supposed to tighten is this one here and after that the bottom one and then this part should be done. Man, that thing is solid. That thing is solid. All right, then the bottom one, I'm gonna use a, a half inch ratcheting box in and do this kind of blind. All right. Got it. 
So other than a couple of those just hard to get to, but look at this, man. This thing is, it's on there. That thing is rigid, solid. So it came with a couple zip ties. We'll go around, through a slot around the back of the engine harness, back through this slot here. I wouldn't say that this is 100% necessary because that engine harness, we haven't unbolted anything that holds it in place, but maybe this helps just make everything nice and rigid. I think just the top one, because if I try to force the bottom one over, it's gonna, could put more stress on the, on the grommet where it goes through. Now, there was one last, there was one last M8 bolt with two small washers and a nut. And I think that's for, this is our bracket for our diagnostic port. There's four holes here, I guess you could, Line it up wherever you want. I'll take a look at this. Looks like maybe, maybe I'll just drop everything. Then on top of the coil bucket. Along with some dirt. All right, I'm gonna put it in the second from the top on this side. You know, the, I, now I know what it is. That, that zip tie is to keep it away from this bolt coming through. That's what that zip tie is for, because it's really close here. And you definitely don't want your engine harness rubbing on a, on a threaded bolt. So it's a, it is a self-locking nut, washer on both sides, diagnostic port, snaps right back into place, completely accessible. Thinking I may put one more zip tie on just to keep that engine harness away from that bolt. So the hose just runs basically underneath this air cleaner. I cut about, oh, I don't know, two feet, 20 inches or so off and routed it right back into it, no problem. It's just regular hose. There was actually a, about a three inch piece and then a joint to this. So the piece that goes onto the little pump is a little bit larger. So I was able to cut it back there, cut it a little bit long, and you got, you got some, uh, some room to maneuver with that. All right. Let's put the, we should be able to put this back in because I, I closed the hole. There we go. So all that's left to do is to take these two wires. We're gonna extend it back for the plug. And it's pretty typical from what the directions say is to just cut by the plug. And then we're gonna join them back up. It, it came with, um, it came with a covering which is not the cheap stuff. This is good. Better. It's like a braided one. It's, we got uh, two wires. We've got butt splices, uh, butt splices that are heat shrink. And this isn't this isn't critical. So as far as butt splicing and then heat shrinking this and then putting it inside here, it's uh, I think that's pretty good. It's not a super critical thing where you have to go nuts with your connector, but the, these are good quality connectors. Now the connectors on, on the plug, they're blue and then blue with a black stripe. So I imagine we'll go blue to red and then blue with a black stripe to black, positive, negative. And it's just a little Denso 12 volt uh, pump that is actually part of the tank and that'll complete that part. So it's much later in the day right now. I had to recharge the battery on here. And in the meantime, I've been poking around with this. I did have to trim 
the edge of it where it meets the radiator it's hitting the fan shroud so I cut it with the hacksaw then hit it with uh, I tuned it up with a flapper wheel on here and I cut in an area here an area here a couple areas it's still not a perfect fit and then the cable there's a cable here I'm not sure where it goes to down there it's some kind of sensor I had to lift it out of its hole and I just have it kind of loose and I have the uh, the intake the the uh, air filter is loose I could push it back the only problem I can see is that right right in here one of the air conditioner hoses touch and whenever it touches it's a rubber hose I'll probably have to get something to wrap that hose with just so I don't get any rub on here I'm gonna try and fit it in here again it's the only places I can see it touching but the holes weren't lining up because I it was hitting the fan shroud so I'm gonna try and get it back in here okay so with that that wire out of the back that is allowing me to get all the way down flush on the bottom which was an issue that hole lines up it's pretty good if I had some pinch weld um, so I got some rubber here I used it's a double double side and it's got a pretty thick piece in the middle if I had a pinch weld piece because I have where I cut that if I could slide over rubber where rub up against this uh, fan shroud I might try and use this along there because it had just had this foam is all it was but it was flat it was a flat piece it wasn't wasn't the edge what I have going now so The, f the only one that doesn't really line up good is the front bottom hole. So I try and get that one started first. I'm just not sure why that one doesn't want to line up. Everything else lines up pretty good but that one. I mean, I can imagine I could open the hole up a little larger on the on the battery tray. All right, so that one I got started in there by hand, which is good. So there's a total of uh, five of these. One in the top here, and these are all. These are all factory holes that they're going into. I'm not, I'm not drilling anything. That one went in good. thing is that I'm not pinching any wires anywhere everything looks pretty good okay the bottom centers in front ones in Got one more. There's two on the bottom, one in the front, and two in the side.
That one's a little longer than everything. A little deeper in there. See a little, little tiny extra extension, possibly. Okay, all five in, very solid. Now, as far as anything touching, the back wire is loose, but it's I can't use its little hole. This front loom that comes from horns and headlights, it's got its own cutout and it's fine. The uh, AC hose is just, just kissing the edge here. And then this, the only place it's touching is right here where this yellow paint is. But if I could get, I might actually just be able to use the foam. Because this is what it was designed for. I think I might look for some of that high temp pinch weld rubber and use it, but this actually cushions all any areas that would touch all the way through there. Now it's not, no, there's no plastic to plastic. That's the fan shroud that it would be touching. So I look closely at the other side here and it was, it had been trimmed as well. Down, yeah, you were not gonna be able to see in there, but it, it's been trimmed. So now you can see I've got a second battery well, just like this one. And you see this big gap in front? I've got to see if on this bracket here, this goes back in. Oh, it's leaking. And have those power fingers there. Yeah, there must be a crack here or something. There's it's always leaking leaking a little bit right there. So that looks pretty good. The only thing I hadn't didn't do yet was the uh, this little accessory mount, and I believe It mounts right like that using some existing holes. So that so that shouldn't be an issue. But I really like this. That was some wasted space up there. And if that's actually took me the longest to do, just because I was kind of taking my time with it. But it looks good. It looks good. I think it's going to work out that these Delta vehicle system products are pretty dang good quality. You know, it's when the holes line up, when they have the good instructions and you don't have to do any drilling. That means they did a lot of engineering up front to try and find a place to put it. And that's that's pretty good up there. I like it. We'll see. We'll take it off road and bounce it around, see if we have any issues. But I do have a place for another battery now with this thing in here. I mean, you can see, I guess the same size battery can go in there. Kind of preparations for a future dual battery system. So I was able to relocate the, and this is a 97. So the second half of the 80 series with the, um, with the 24 valve, the, the bigger motor in it. So I put a relocation kit in for the, the washer fluid relocated it back to the firewall, got the first half of the 80 series, like 91, 92, somewhere 90, I don't know how far it goes, maybe up to 94. Battery box, put that in, and now it's ready if I wanna put in a dual battery. 
and then that little this little tiny bracket here this the, the last one I have it's only got a couple of bolts to hold it in pretty straight really straightforward and what that does is allows me to to put on um, like I think Blue Seas makes a ACR system automatic combiner relay to where it'll combine them it'll disconnect them it gives you a switch inside and it can also do it automatically so something like that is a little bit cheaper route to go than than a full-blown um, like BCDC type system but it's better than just one of those relays the relay that when it sees above say 13 volts which means it's running and charging it'll connect the batteries when it drops below that uh, meaning it's either off probably means it's off it'll disconnect them so i that's a little too simple for what i would want the real reason i'd want this is if i ever do put some stuff inside i can run it off this second battery or if i'm gonna put a winch on here which it may need and be able to winch with two batteries be pretty cool the jeep winches with one uh, you've seen the only times i've needed to winch with it and it's worked fine so I don't know, but it was uh, it was empty real estate in there and pretty inexpensive. Again, these parts were bought from Delta Vehicle Systems. They're out of Idaho, I think, and they're all made in USA type stuff. And they've got a lot of cool little things for 80 series. So if you've got an 80 series and you haven't heard of Delta, they, they make some cool stuff. One of their big things uh, is their new bumpers. And they've got a uh, pan hard bar drop. It's a bracket. Rather than getting an adjustable one, this relocates it, which in the back, it keeps you your wheel track square and it keeps your pan hard bar flat, which is what you want. There's a lot of articulation on the back of these. And going with one of those instead of an adjustable is the better way to go. If you're an engineer, you would know what I'm talking about. It's the angle of the dangle. All right, you guys, hope you guys enjoyed it. I think I lost about 10 pounds today, but I had a lot of fun putting this all together. We'll see you guys in the next video.